it's Nerdburger here, and I was looking at my channel the other day and realized that I haven't done a thrift haul in like a crazy long time. I go op shopping every weekend, even during the week, because there's one right near where I live. Uh, so this has accumulated over many, many months. There is a lot more that I've thrifted, but this is all I could find this morning. I like op shopping for vintage shirts, VHS toys, old gaming consoles and games, uh, and even records lately. So uh, I thought I'd share some of my favorite things that I found in the last couple of months. Let's start with these two records that I picked up last weekend from a local record store. Uh, the guy's a really funny guy and um, he just gives you whatever price he wants to for things. So I picked up this amazing soundtrack for Clockwork Orange one of my ultimate favorite movies. Insert photo of me and my 16th birthday cake here. You can enjoy that. I've been obsessed with this movie since I was 15 years old. So I was really excited to have the soundtrack on vinyl. It's in great condition. I paid $10 for it. And then I got this. Uh, it is the Chipmunks and the Chipettes Born to Rock. I used to listen to the cassette tape of this all the time at my next door neighbor's house when we used to hang out. And I don't even know what I paid for this. I think it was like four bucks. And I've already listened to it and it's still in my record player, which is why it's not in here. You guys might enjoy this if you're an old school Avril Lavigne fan, a skater boy till the end. It's a novelty tie. <laughs> I got this for four dollars during the week and I've decided that I'm just gonna start buying all the rad novelty ties I see and just wearing them with a button-up shirt. I don't own many button-up shirts. Most of them are sleepy tops that I got you know, with pajama pants, but I just wear them as shirts. Anyway, it'll look fine. So Liam tied this in a knot ready to go for me because I don't know how to tie ties. And it's all the South Park boys and it's official Comedy Central South Park. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really cool deep blue with the four boys on the front, but it also has this cool... I don't know, geometric pattern across the top as well. Also, I picked up a lot of shirts this month. Look, anyone that knows me, I'm not joking. I have hundreds of shirts. Hundreds of shirts. If there's some things I like, I want it on a t-shirt. That's kind of how I display my love for things. I never wear plain shirts. It's always going to have something on it. Uh, so I picked up a few this month. This one uh, is an original 1990s Chicago Bull shirt. I was a big fan of Michael Jordan and basketball when that whole thing uh, was going on in the 90s. My favorite player was actually Muggsy Bogues because he was short and I love the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, but my other favorite team was Chicago Bulls. So I picked this one up. It cost me $4 at a local op shop and I'm very, very happy to own it. I also found another fun animal shirt you guys know I love gator and shark movies as well as shirts and I picked this one up again for only four dollars and it is a crocodilly but the coolest thing about it uh, is that it's from Darwin that's pretty rad I've never visited Darwin is that it is double-sided so on the back it has his tail and on the front it has his happy little face about to get some din dins uh, I really like my animal shirts one day I'll do a video that's purely animal shirts in my collection. There's like at least 15 now, I think. <laughs> I've got a bunch of books this month, which is quite rare. I don't buy a lot of books from the op shop because I collect mainly comic books, but every now and then I splurge. Uh, of course, if I see goosebumps I need, I pick them up. I have a list on my phone of the goosebumps I still need. So I check that whenever I go shopping. I managed to pick up two. I got number 53, Chicken Chicken. I really, really love the cover of this. Uh, this might be one of my favorite covers of the entire Goosebumps run. Uh, and this one, which is How I Learned to Fly. Oh! Chicken, chicken, learn to fly. Could it be a coincidence? Also, I paid $4 for this one. It is Stephen King's The Shining. I own absolutely no Stephen King books at all. They're really hard to find, uh, especially the ones with the older covers like this, and that's why I picked this one up. I love the cover. I'm hoping to read it uh, very, very soon. It's a bit of a chunky one, but you know, it's fun sometimes to just get involved in a book for the next six years because that's how long it takes me to read a book if it's not an all-ages novel. Also, for $1.99, last weekend I picked up this R.L. Stein's Halloween Night 2. I'm really excited to own this because I don't own any R.L. Stein books other than Goosebumps so far. They're very, very hard to find now. They really are. Uh, I really like this because of the neon orange writing and the illustration on the front, which is three skeleton people in hoods, but it's also raised like 
the Goosebumps logo on Goosebumps book, so I don't know, I really like it, it's very special, and I'll probably read this one first. Now, one of my all-time favourite shows, The Young One, I managed to pick up for $5 the entire series 1 and 2 from the op shop. I like to buy uh, the TV shows that I watch instead of using Netflix because I'm constantly using the internet to talk to you guys and upload, so I can't watch TV and upload at the same time, so it's really good to have either VHS or DVD to watch most of the time. So, I already own this on VHS, but now I have it on DVD as well because that's what I wanted to do. I was really obsessed with Rick Mail as a teen and even cut my hair into a bowl cut with a rat's tail just to look like him because I loved him so much. He's one of my all-time favourite people. Uh, so yeah, the Young One series 1 or 2 for 5 bucks. Now, of course, this would not be a thrift haul without some VHS and I've got some good ones this month, which is rare because most of the op shops here where I live don't stock VHS anymore. They just take them straight to the bin. Nobody collects them. Uh, even my duplicates I found I took to an op shop recently and then they just had a box out the front that said free and it made me sad because I wanted that op shop to make money from them. That's the whole idea of donating, right? To help them raise money. So, I don't know, it's kind of sad and getting really stressful because I feel like you guys don't realise I still collect VHS but I just can't find them. They're not readily available in op shops except for two. Footscray and out in Greensboro and so this month I made a trip to both. One was with my dad and he couldn't stop laughing at how excited I was getting over my videos. Uh, but yeah, I picked up quite a few. One, which is crazy, I had an urge to watch so I hired it the day before from the video store and then found it the next day and it's never been watched. Who would purchase Can't Hardly Wait, one of the greatest teen films of all time and not watch it. I also picked up this, it's called Holy Matrimony. It's an X rental which is also very exciting. It stars Patricia Arquette and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Now can I please read you the premise of this film? I've never watched it, I cannot wait to watch it. It sounds so wrong. Uh, it is about a young woman who steals money and then hides out with a wholesome family of her husband uh, to after the robbery they committed goes down. When the money hidden, they commence their life together with this good book colony of religious disciples known as Hutteries. Havana is disgusted with this setup but has no choice but to stay on. When Peter is killed in an accident, she must find the money she worked so hard for. Wait for it. From here on, her life becomes a living hell, especially when she finds out the law of the land is to marry the brother of your deceased husband. And he is all of 12. Yeah, there is no way this movie will get made nowadays. It sounds really strange. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt never talks about his amazingly famous movie, Holy Matrimony. So let's find out what that's all about. Also picked up another one of my all-time favorite actors, Rob Schneider's The Animal. I also own Juice Bigelow European... No, not European Gigolo. That is the worst sequel of all time. You can fight me on that, but I'm telling you, that is the worst sequel of all time. Anyway, The Animal on VHS. Haven't watched this in a long time. Looking forward to seeing it. Rob Schneider, always a delight. He's a weird man. He's a weird man. Also got X Rental American Pie 2. Oh, another one of my all time favorite teen movies. This really reminds me of being a teenager. Like, I don't know how many times I've watched this one. Um, and very excited that's in a big X rental case with some lovely $7 overnight X rental stickers on there. That's very nice in neon orange. If you can't tell, I like neon orange this week. Uh, and then this one, you can't really see it because it's got a sticker over it, but it's called And Your Parents. And you thought your parents were weird. I've never seen this movie, but Liam was so excited to see this. He thinks I'm really going to enjoy it. It is an X rental that went on to Trado Rama, and then I picked it up at the op shop for a dollar. So, very exciting. I believe the boys in this movie have a dad that's a robot. I don't know. Looking forward to seeing this one. Now, this was an absolute steal. We were just out getting some groceries, getting some coffee, and then we went to the local op shop, and there was an inbox PlayStation. Yes, the old school PlayStation. One of my all time favorite games is on this and we've owned that game for at least a year. We picked it up when we went back to Canberra to visit and this cost us $25 and I was finally able to play Buster Groove, one of my all time favorite games. I played it from start to finish as soon as we put it in and the saddest thing was it took me a while to get the hang of it again so it felt like a failure but then I completed the whole game 
uh, and it was just magical, so I can't wait to play again soon, but it was really awesome to finally be able to play it on our PlayStation. I was really excited to find a game that I sold on a long, long time ago and regretted it ever since. It is Girl Talk, a game of truth or dare. I also have Girl Talk Dateline, which is my favourite board game. Like. Oh my gosh, I played that so, so much. Uh, this one is all about doing truth or dares. There is a game board, I'll show you a close up here, uh, where you spin the arrow and you have to do what the card says. And if you don't do what the card says, you have to put a zit on your face. It's so embarrassing. Uh, I can't believe I have to put a fake sticker on my face. Oh my God. Uh, this cost me, I've still got the sticker attached, a $3.99, which is very cheap for Australian op shops to get a nice girl talk board game there. Now it's time for everybody's favourite part of the video, it's toy time! Uh, I got most of these in the last month, actually, I got most of these in the last two weeks, let's just be real. If you want to see all the toys we get, you should follow me on Instagram because we usually post them on Instagram stories on the way back from the market because I put them away straight away and then they're really hard to get to at home. So these are all the ones I had loose around the house that I was cleaning or fixing up. So let's start with this. It's a little party uh, Chucky and I really really like him because you never see Chucky in kind of costumes like this. He has a little clown hat and he has his little clown nose and a bow and little green overalls. Oh my gosh he's so cute. Uh, I don't think that this is officially licensed. It doesn't say uh, Nickelodeon or Rugrats, I think it was, oh no, it says 2004 Viacom, so maybe this was from a game, um, but it was definitely from a claw machine, I can tell you that much. So somebody won this, and now he's mine, and I love him for life. Then we picked up this guy from 2004, he's a space, uh, Raphael. He has a cool space helmet that you can open and shut if you don't mess it up, like, ah, uh, the your eye do, looks good. Uh, he also goes into space in gold which is rare. Usually space toys are like white or silver, so I really, really loved that this was gold. I buy generally any space related toy that I find. I can't help it. I have Space Woody, like from Toy Story, this, um, Matt Mason's. We have old school Matt Mason set. Uh, yeah, I just love space toys. Now this entire box that I have here, I picked up last weekend, only a few days ago, and I paid 50 cents each for these, which is crazy. Like some of these things are worth a lot more than 50 cents. We'll start with the fast food toys because we all know that's my favorite. I got two still in packet. This is a Marty Morphin Power Rangers 1995 Hungry Jacks. It is the Black Power Ranger Finger Puppet. I also picked up this one. It is a straw slip-on. Now this is from 1998 and it is of Birdie. I'm gonna try and get a close-up shot of this. I don't think it'll be very good, but you put this on top of your straws. Can't believe I found one still in packet. That's very exciting. I also got this little Jasmine in her car. I can't remember what year this came out, but you ride it along and she goes backwards and forwards like this because that's how you get car sickness. Everybody loves that. That. I also saw these two, which I've never seen. They're from Australia because they're from Burger King, not Hungry Jacks. Burger King is called Hungry Jacks in Australia, so that's how I know where the toys released. They're both from, hopefully, the Goofy movie or the Goofy TV series. <laughs> I'm really excited because they're both bowling and I love bowling. I wish that was not so expensive. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna go bowling this weekend. So really happy to have the two of them and I'm hoping that there's a set of two more because I'd really like to have his son, Max, as well. That would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, I picked those up and you can do them and they go boo across the floor. Boo! Bowling boo! Oh yeah, because they're like chasing after the ball. Oh, it's another McDonald's toy. This is a little birdie clip on. I'm not sure what it clipped onto or whether it just came like that to clip onto something. It is from 1993 and we all know that I love anything with the original McDonald's characters on it. I got a Ruby Roo. Here he is in his detective gear. Fun fact, I actually own the little magnifying glass so I'll put him with the Scooby-Doo magnifying glass. I think that's very adorable and he looks like a Sherlock Holmes but uh, he's a dog. I also got a Boo. This is the coolest figure of a Boo I've ever seen. I don't think it's a fast food toy. I think it was actually from a play set. I was really excited for this until I got home. So this is a Sweet Secret from 1984. I was so excited. I only own one of these. It's in perfect condition. And I couldn't believe I got this for 50 cents until I got home. And she's not in there. Usually it has a head that pops up and then that's her arms and feet, so kind of really devastated there. I also picked up this Gidget, which is really exciting because I only have one Gidget toy 
ever. Uh, and this is a nice, enormous, big one. It is from Applause. It doesn't have a dating on it, but I'm really excited to have this Gidget to add to my little collection. And then the two things that I think I got an absolute steal on for 50 cents. The first is this original Game Boy of Space Invaders. For 50 cents, you can't go wrong. I'm hoping it works. I haven't tested it in our Game Boy yet. Also, I picked up this is amazing. Okay, these toys go for like $100 each if they're in good nick. Now, this is terrible condition. He's missing a foot. He's not worth that much, but I couldn't afford to buy one usually. So it's nice to own this guy. This is a Micronaut from 1974. This is one of the oldest toys in my collection. He had a missing foot, but it was usually blue. He's got little limbs that you can move back and forward and up and down. And he also has a cool face. His name is Ant. Ant something, Ant Lore, I think. Uh, he has a glow in the dark brain on the back, which is often missing from them. But what he's missing is a foot and these cool orange limbs. I'll put a photo up here of what he looks like complete. There's no way I would pay the hundred dollars for a complete one of these because they're not something I generally collect. So I'm really happy that I found this for 50 cents to put on my random toy shelf at the back. The best score that we've had in a very, very long time happened just two days ago. Uh, I ditched Liam for five seconds because I got sidetracked by a lovely t-shirt, which I didn't end up buying, but Liam did spend $10 to get these gargoyles. Now, I don't know the names of any of these. I think this one's Goliath. That's the only one I remember. Uh, but we picked up these for two dollars each, which is insane! These go for so much money. I have wanted some gargoyles for a very long time. They're such a cool design, and they never re-released these. Like they haven't done a new run of gargoyles or a new TV series. Now these aren't in the perfect condition. We did have to hot glue gun this onto the back. Hot glue gun you can clean off easily. So if you ever need to fix a toy quickly and just want it to look nice, just hot glue gun it. You can fix that up, don't worry about it. Uh, so here he is, looking real cool with his big wings and his armor and his cool whatever that is, pew pew. And then this dude is a more gray color and he looks very angry and unhappy with the world. This guy is like an old man and he has brown wings. I'm so excited for you guys to tell me the names of these in the comments down below. Please tell me. I'm so excited. Uh, and he has grey hair and brown wings and they move back and forth. He's in the best condition out of all of them. Actually, this guy's in pretty good condition. We didn't have to glue his wings, but you just have to be careful on the back. Uh, then we got this guy who sadly is missing a wing and a tail, uh, but he has a cool, like, he looks like he's ceramic. Not ceramic. You know, breakable. Um, yeah, so there's that one. And then this guy who's super cool. Oh, I broke him already. Well, he's breakable. He's like a robot dude. Um, and he, he is kind of like a cyborg. And he has metal wings and everything's metal. And then you can press his button and he pops apart into pieces. Which is a very cool design. I'm not sure how that helps in a situation if you were a robot trying to help humans or whatever, you know, I don't feel like that's very useful to just pop into a million pieces. But, uh, yeah, he's really, really cool. So I was so excited to get these. They're from 1995 from a TV series that Liam and I also loved as kids. I can't believe I've forgotten all the names of them. That's so depressing. But yeah, can't believe we picked these up for $2 each. It was like the best morning at the markets ever. Uh, what have you guys picked up lately? And tell me what your favourite thing I thrifted is in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. I'm trying to actively comment back to you guys and talk to you more because I've been too busy in the past year. So leave me a comment. Let's have a chat. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys a little bit later this week. Mwah! Mwah, mwah, mwah. The kisses for you.